Uh, of course, we've continued to talk about the big names that are there at OTAs, guys like Lamar Jackson, uh, Roquan Smith, and new Baltimore Raven, uh, Derrick Henry. And we talked about the, the, the huge impact that that can have on the Baltimore Ravens, just seeing those guys in positions of leadership actually be at something that's completely voluntary, something that they do not have to be there for any reason at all. But they're still there, so that shows a lot about them. But there are a few guys um, who are also there at OTAs who may not be the big names on the team, but they could possibly have a big impact, especially this upcoming season. And then when you think about their statuses from last year, it's just a complete contrast to what they were last season, and that was hurt. Uh, those two names, David Ajabo and Andrew Voorhees. Start with David Ajabo, him being there at OTAs and him being healthy at OTAs, that's significant because he's somebody that has a huge, both of these guys have huge opportunities in front of them. Um, but starting with David Ajabo, and this is something that I had missed. I had missed from a, an article from The Athletic uh, about a week ago uh, with Jeff Zrebic. He said that Harbaugh said last month that outside linebacker David Ajabo, who played in just three games last year and then had season-ending knee surgery, was healthy and ready to go. And, of course, we've seen the, the, the videos and whatnot, uh, and David Ajabo has been in some of those with the Baltimore Ravens at OTAs. But that's so significant, man, because David Ajabo – is another one of those players where we continue to have the conversation about potential this, potential that, potential this, potential that. Uh, but we just haven't got to see it all the way. We haven't got to see a full season of it. Uh, we've seen him play in a couple games here, a couple games there. And he's been productive, but we just haven't got to see him put a full season of it together. So him being out there this year, him being at OTAs and him being healthy, that can go such a long way for not only him, but for this entire team. We know Jadavian Clowney, he was one of their leaders at pass rush last year. Him, Calvin Noy. Uh, they brought Calvin Noy back, but they did lose Jadavian Clowney to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so there's a spot at the pass rush position. Of course, you got a Dafe away there as well. But there's a spot at the pass rush position that is available. And with David Ajabo... If he can just stay healthy, he has a chance to make a big impact on these Baltimore Ravens this year. I know a lot of people doubting him, and I can understand why, because it's two seasons and they've been filled with injuries. One happened, of course, at his pro day, so that was his redshirt year, his rookie year. And then the last one happened a couple games in, and even though during the preseason he didn't even look healthy at all. Uh, but he played through whatever he was dealing with, but he obviously couldn't make it through the season. Ended up getting a surgery, and that ended the year for him. Um, but... If he can just stay healthy. And then, again, Tyus Bowser. Well, we didn't have Tyus Bowser all year last year, so the spot was already open. But him being officially gone, that opens the spot up even more. So David Ajabo got a nice opportunity just sit, sitting right there in front of him. Right there in front of him. This dude was a former second-round pick. A lot of people thought that he could be a top five, top ten, top 15 pick at the latest overall. But, of course, his injury... It dropped him into the second round. Somebody else whose injury dropped him into a later round who could potentially have a big impact on these Baltimore Ravens is Andrew Voorhees. Uh, he was, of course, a rookie last year, uh, but he was hurt all year because, again, somebody else. At their pro day, they end up getting hurt. Ravens traded back in the draft to select him, so they see him as, all right, maybe we could, we could try it out, see what happens. The worst-case scenario doesn't work out, but best-case scenario, we drafted him in, what, the sixth, seventh round, and if he could take off for us, great, and hopefully he can, but with him, he has an opportunity because the Baltimore Ravens, something that they do, I, I don't know if you all noticed this over the years, but when, they, when, when the team is really feeling the player and they got high hopes for that player and they got high expectations for that player, they will put that player in these different articles and whatnot on BaltimoreRavens.com. They'll sort of, sort of put a little spotlight on those players. And they did that with Andrew Voorhees. And, and it stuck, stuck out to me a couple weeks ago when they mentioned in the BaltimoreRavens.com article that he could potentially be a starter for them at left guard. Now, when you think about that, the starters at left guard, who are the starters for the Baltimore Ravens at left guard right now? No clue. We don't know. We don't know because him, just like David Ajabo, Ravens lost some veterans at the position and it's wide open for him. It's wide open for him because they had a um they had John Simpson at left guard last year. He left in free agency, signed with the Jets. Uh they had uh, at right guard last year, they had Kevin Zeitler. He left to sign with the Lions. They traded Morgan Moses away. We don't expect Andrew Voorhees to be Baltimore Ravens starting right tackle. But, again, those are, those are three positions on the offensive line 
that are literally wide open right now. There's no clear-cut starter at them at all. We got some guys who we figure will be the starters. Like, I know most people are probably penciling in Roger Rosengarten as starter uh, at right tackle right now, but nothing's official yet, but especially at the guard positions. Andrew Voorhees could step into one of those and end up taking over. He got the potential to. And with him being healthy, that's, that makes all the difference in the world. They, and they talked about it. They showed it. I know my guy Kyle Barber, he pointed it out uh, when Ravens first reported a couple of weeks ago that Andrew Voorhees did not have a knee brace on. So he walking around free, walking around healthy, walking around happy, and walking around ready to take advantage of that opportunity. So with the uncertainty uh, at Baltimore Ravens offensive line, Andrew Voorhees could end up taking that. So when I think about a David Ajabo, when I think about an Andrew Voorhees, and I think about them last year and them just really missing pretty much the entire year, both of them, versus what they could possibly do this year, it's, it's, such, it's so positive, man. It, 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 it's positive potential in, in both of them. Both of them have a huge opportunity literally right in front of them to where they could go from being on injured reserve, they could go from pretty much missing the entire season to making a huge impact on the next one.